Today, we're going to talk about seven ways to boost your vitamin D levels. Why? Majority of the planet Earth is low in vitamin D, and vitamin D is so important, not just in bone health, but for immune health, cardiovascular, your blood sugars, and the list goes on and on and on. In fact, almost every single cell in your body has receptors for vitamin D. And the RDAs, the requirements for vitamin D, are way too low. They're like 600 IUs, okay? Now, that was based on preventing bone loss, but they didn't take in consideration all the other functions of vitamin D to protecting against inflammatory conditions, to having an immune system. And based on all the research and what I'm going to talk about, I recommend the average person get about 10,000 I use a vitamin D every single day as a maintenance dosage, especially in the winter. Now, if you're getting a lot of sun, you definitely don't need that. Now, at first glance, 10,000 I use seems like a lot of vitamin D, right? Well, we're talking about international units. And if we convert this to a micrograms, okay, not grams, not milligrams, but micrograms, it's 250 micrograms, okay? That is only 0.25 milligrams. That's one fourth of one milligram. Okay. So that doesn't sound like very much, does it? Now, as far as the toxicity levels of vitamin D, um, the studies based on that, and I did a separate video on this, are based on people taking hundreds of thousands of IUs for months. And the biggest side effect is hypercalcemia, which is too much calcium in your blood, which could increase your risk for kidney stones. So if you have any thoughts at all about, you know, toxicity levels of vitamin D, just consume 2.5 liters of fluid every single day. Why? Because that will prevent kidney stones. Okay. I mean, that's really easy to do. And also just don't take calcium supplements in any large amounts. So you wouldn't want to take the typical one a day with uh, the calcium carbonate. Okay. If you did these two things, you would greatly reduce your chance of the biggest side effect from vitamin D if you're concerned. Now, when I talk about 10,000 I use of vitamin D, I'm talking about a maintenance dosage. If you're trying to use that for certain conditions, I would recommend going up to maybe 20 to 30 to 40,000 I use. Now, the other thing you need to know about vitamin D is the, these requirements that you need, you just cannot get it from your diet, okay? You just can't get it from your foods. There's just not enough vitamin D in foods to get what you need. So you're really dependent on the sun. And the sun will give you all the vitamin D you need if you're out there long enough and if you expose your skin to it, because it is a certain wave, ultraviolet uh, rays that interact with your skin that convert the cholesterol into um, vitamin D. So that being said, let's just talk about the other barriers that people run into with absorption. We have body barriers. We have your stomach pH. If you don't have a strong uh, acidic stomach, you're not going to get the vitamin D absorption. If there's gut inflammation, that's going to be a big, big barrier. Um, if there's any problem with your kidneys, let's say you're a diabetic and you have kidney problems. Well, the kidney and the liver are two organs that help you convert uh, vitamin D into its active form. So kidney problems equal low vitamin D. And of course, if there's liver problems, whether you have a fatty liver, hepatitis, or cirrhosis, that can inhibit your absorption of vitamin D. Not to mention this one right here. If your liver is damaged, you're not going to make the bile. Bile is absolutely essential for absorbing vitamin D. If you have insulin resistance, like the majority of the population, you're not going to absorb vitamin D. And of course, that comes from a high-carb diet. And of course, if you're a diabetic, you're greatly limited with your absorption of vitamin D. Now, more and more people are getting their genetics tested and there's a certain condition, it's called polymorphism, where the receptor for vitamin D doesn't really absorb vitamin D too well, in which case you just need to take more vitamin D. So you can get that tested just to see, because I met this gal who got a test and here she was taking vitamin D, the normal amount of vitamin D, and it wasn't even working because the receptor wasn't receiving because there was some genetic defect. The more weight you have in your body, the less vitamin D you're going to get and the more vitamin D you require. If you had gastric bypass surgery, your ability to absorb vitamin D is less. 
If you have low diversity in your microbiome, you can't absorb vitamin D as much. The more stress you have, the less absorption of vitamin D you're gonna have. So you can see there's a lot of barriers, but there's even more. Let's say you go on a low fat diet or a low cholesterol diet, or even worse, you're on medications like statins, that's gonna limit the raw material that vitamin D is created from. Now, vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. So when you take vitamin D, uh, it might be a good idea to take it with some oil or fat or a meal. Now, another barrier that people have is they, for some reason, can't swallow vitamin D capsules. Let's say they're a child or an adult that just can't get the capsules down. Now, if you have this problem or you have children that can't swallow capsules, I have a very good solution. I put that in the description. It not only has vitamin D3, but it also has vitamin K2, zinc, as well as MCT oil for absorption. Now, the other barrier is skin color. The darker your skin, the more vitamin D you're going to need. And then we have age, okay? So your skin gets thicker as you age, and also you absorb less vitamin D. And your location where you live is important too. It has to do with latitude. If you live in the northern part of the planet, not close to the equator, you're going to have a difficult time getting enough sun to convert your cholesterol into vitamin D. And then, of course, we have the seasons, okay? You have the winter. Even if you lay out in the sun in the winter, okay, you're still not going to get enough vitamin D simply because where the sun is in relationship to how much rays that you're getting. Vitamin D absorption is also dependent on your magnesium level and your zinc level, two other things that can limit your absorption. And anytime you take vitamin D3, you always want to take vitamin K2 because they work together. Vitamin K2 keeps the calcium out of the joints and the arteries, okay? And the last variable that is a big variable is just being outside in the sun enough. More and more people are inside, especially children. And so that is really why we are deficient. Okay, so let's take a look at how you can boost your vitamin D levels. Get at least one hour in the sun every single day. Okay, of course, not in the winter, but during the day. And expose your arms and your legs to the sun directly. That would be a good thing. Of course, expose your skin, but not to the point of being burned. All right, number two, take your vitamin D because it's fat soluble with some fat, some MCT oil, or when you eat a meal. And also when you eat the meal to get your magnesium and your zinc, make sure you consume food high in magnesium, as in big salads. Now, of course, with the zinc, you can uh, get zinc from a trace mineral supplement, or you can get it from shellfish or seafood as well. Number three, go on keto and intermittent fasting. So you have more ability to convert into the active form of D3. Also, you have more bile to absorb vitamin D3. Also, you're going to decrease insulin resistance and help your absorption. And you're going to lose weight, which is going to directly increase your ability to absorb more vitamin D. Not to mention you reduce your gut inflammation from the fasting and absorb more vitamin D. So this is very, very important. Number four, consume more fatty fish on a regular basis and or cod liver oil. The cool thing about cod liver oil compared to like fish supplements is that cod liver oil not only has the omega-3 fatty acid, but it has vitamin A and vitamin D, okay? So it's unique in that it's different than fish oils, okay? Fish oils don't have vitamin D. Fatty fish does, but not fish oils. So that's why I recommend the cod liver oil. Number five, if you take vitamin D in a liquid form, it tends to absorb better, especially if there's gut issues, if there's stomach issues, and there's intestinal issues. And I will put a link down below in the description for a good brand. Number six, if you have a genetic factor related to um, the receptor for vitamin D, the only solution you have is just to take higher quantities. So you wouldn't take 10,000 IUs, you would probably take 30,000 IUs as your maintenance dosage. And number seven, increase more bile. Generally speaking, if you have more bile, you can absorb more vitamin D. Now, how do you do that? Well, you can either take a purified bile salt product or you can do things to the liver to increase the bile. And on that note, I think the best video to watch next would be on how to increase your bile salts.
i put it up right here.